Hey third grade art friends, it's Mrs. Herbey. Um, we're going to start a kind of a cool quick little project this week where we're going to be taking a closer look at snowflakes and we're going to be, um, I'm going to be introducing you to a new vocabulary word called radial symmetry. So inside your um, packet of take home things you should have found a square piece of paper. Um, this little, uh, it's almost like a little uh, rectangle of poster board and a hexagon, okay? That's what we're gonna need this week, as well as a pencil, and I would recommend that your pencil have a nice sharp tip on the end, okay? Um, so go ahead, grab those things, and we'll get started. All right, guys, so here I have a snowflake that I drew, um, and you might say, oh my gosh, Mrs. Herbe, that looks super complicated. Um, but what I'm gonna show you guys is that um, it's really quite easy um, to do if you start with a hexagon. But before we get started, I wanted us to talk about snowflakes and I wanted us to think about radial symmetry. And what symmetry means, and you guys probably um, hopefully remember this um, from when we did our self-portraits last year, um, Symmetry means the same on both sides. So our faces are symmetrical, butterflies are symmetrical, and other things like that. But when something has radial symmetry, what that means is um, radius, radial comes from the word radius, um, which uh, circles have a radius, right? And so what we're going to do is when we think about radial symmetry, what that means is it's the same all the way around. So snowflakes have radial symmetry because whatever is on the end of this point is on this point, is on this point, is on this point, is on this point, and this point. And as you guys recall, uh, snowflakes have six points, okay? Sometimes people draw them with eight, but um, if you we looked under a snowflake, with a, if we looked at a snowflake under a microscope, we would see that snowflakes in actuality have six points. And so hence, that is why I gave you guys a hexagon, okay? Because what will happen is the hexagon also has one, two, three, four, five, six points and six sides. And so we'll use that hexagon to draw um, the, the the starting framework for our snowflake, all right? So I hope that's, um, that kind of gives you a little bit of an overview, um, and I'll be stressing to you as we design our snowflakes um, the idea of once we come up with an element that we want to add to our snowflake, um, it'll be sort of like a wheel. We'll roll add it and turn, add it and turn. So we're gonna be thinking of this sort of as a wheel that's gonna be going around and around. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try to find the center of our piece of paper. Um, if you happen to have a ruler at home, uh, you, we can use the ruler to figure out the center. If you don't have a ruler, um, another little trick I'll show you is we can use sort of a pseudo fold method to figure it out. Uh, we don't need to know the exact, exact center but it would help us if we, um, if we roughly knew what the center of the, of the piece of paper was, okay? So what we're gonna do is when we measure something with our ruler, um, you'll notice a lot of times we wanna just put the ruler at the edge of the piece of paper. But if you'll notice um, on here, on this ruler, you'll notice there's this dark black line right here. And that's what you want to put on the edge of your piece of paper, not the actual edge of the ruler. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on the edge of my piece of paper. And I can see that this square is nine inches long. So I know that half of nine is four and a half. So I'm going to come over to the four. Well, here's five. And then I see, oh, there's the halfway point. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little mark right there. Okay. And that tells me, all right, there's a, and then I'm going to do it again a little bit further down. So I'm going to line up this black line with the edge of my paper. 
and I'll know it's lined up because I'll see a number 9 over here. And I'm going to find that 4.5 mark and then put a little mark. And then what I'm going to do is I can connect, I can line up my ruler so that it matches with this line and this mark. And I'm just going to very roughly, very, very lightly, just draw a little light line like that. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my paper. So now that line is going horizontally. And then I'm going to do the same exact thing I did before. I'm going to put my ruler on the edge of the paper. With the black mark lined up there. I see the 9 at the end. I'm going to put a small little mark where the 4.5 is. And I'm going to slide my ruler down here. I'm going to find there's the edge. Here's my 9. Here's my 4.5. And, and then I'll line up the edge of my ruler with each of those little marks. And then you can see, oh, where, there's li where those lines intersect is the middle of my piece of paper. Okay. Now if, and then I can just erase those light little lines that I drew before. Okay. Now, if you don't have a ruler, what we can do is this. You can take your piece of paper and if you just bring over the left, the right side and the right corners to meet with the left corners, kind of like that. I'm not going to fold it completely, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little sort of a fold and a fold. So now you can kind of see there's a little bit of a bend in the paper, but it's not a full crease. And then I'm just going to do that same thing where I'm going to, I rotated the paper. Okay. So now that little fold is going horizontally. And I'm just going to bring the right corners over to meet the left corners. Make sure they're lined up. Kind of adjust it. And I'm going to do that same thing. We're going to kind of slide my finger out and give it a little, just a little pinch, but not a full pinch. Okay. And then I can kind of see, oh, check this out, where these lines kind of intersect is the middle of my piece of paper. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going, we're going to take our hexagon and we're going to try to kind of line it up with, to find the center here. And I can see sort of the, the, the lines that are coming down here. So I'm going to try to line those up in the middle and then line this up in the middle. It doesn't have to be exactly um, in the middle, but if it's roughly in the middle, that will help us out. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to hold on to this and I'm going to gently trace. And you can kind of turn it so you can reach all the sides. Turn it. Oops. Oh my gosh. I turned it and it moved. <gasps> what do I do? Well, here's what we do. We just kind of line it back up where it was. And it might take a minute to kind of figure that out. And then after we line it back up, then we just finish drawing it. Okay? So there is my hexagon, which is in the middle of my piece of paper. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to also, um, we want to find the middle of this, this little uh, ruler. One of the ways we could do that is we could simply just, like we talked about, fold it over, make a fold, and then once we have that fold there, I'm just going to take something that's straight and just draw a line there. Okay, so that is my middle line. Okay, if I didn't want to fold it, you know what we do. We're just going to put the edge of this, this black mark on the edge of this. And I see, oh, the ruler's roughly seven and a half. Hmm, how do I figure out what's the halfway point? Well, it's going to be roughly, it's going to be three and a half plus three and a half is seven. So then I need one more quarter. So it's going to be right around in here. And that's exactly where I folded it. Okay. So then we'll find the the three and the quarter mark. Okay. And then you can draw a line. All right. So now that we know that 
this the halfway of this and we have this positioned we are ready to roll so what I want you to do is rotate your hexagon so that and this is important so that the two you have two edges that are going vertically and then the other edges are going diagonally to a point so you have a point um, going away from you and a point going towards you okay and what we're going to do is we're going to take our ruler and we're going to line up um, the edge of the ruler with this point right here so this point and this point and we're going to try to position it also so that this middle is also in the middle so we're kind of lining the middle up with the middle and then we're sliding this over so that the ruler is even with this point and this point. And it may take a little bit to get everything squared away. And how you'll know you're um, relatively close is that you can kind of see, is this space roughly about the same as this space? I can see this is a little bit smaller than that, but that's okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, pencil and I'm going to hold um, so I'm right-handed, so I'm holding the ruler with my left hand, and then I'm just going to slide my pencil down top to bottom until I get to the bottom of the ruler, okay? And then I'm just going to remove it. So now I have one line. Now, since this is radial symmetry, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this um, clockwise. So I'm going to turn it this way, okay? So that again, I have two flat sides, and then I have two points, one facing away from me, one facing towards me. I'm going to take my ruler, and again, I'm going to try to line up the edge with these points. And so see how it's not lined up at the top there, and it's not lined up in the middle. Uh, what do I do? Well, you can solve one thing at a time. So I'm going to slide it up. So now it's kind of in line with there. And then I'm going to rotate it towards me or towards, towards the right. And now, oh, there I've got it lined up. So then I'm going to again start at the tippy top, slide my pencil down, and draw another line. So now I have an X, and if you've ever just sort of quickly drawn a snowflake, you kind of draw an X, but it's really hard to make sure that the X is created so that all of the, um, all of the, the pie pieces that are created are equal. So this is going to ensure for us that every um, one of these shapes is going to be equal to the other one. Then what we're going to do is we're going to turn our paper clockwise. Okay, now my X is going horizontally, and again, I have two new points, this point and this point. Okay, so I'm going to take the edge of my ruler, and I'm going to, again, try to find, this is lined up with the middle, and then I have that top edge lined up, but I don't have the bottom one lined up. Oh, now nothing's lined up, so it's kind of sliding all over the place, so you can kind of just fuss around with it. And then now, I've got the points lined up, and this is in the middle, okay? So now I'm going to draw my line. And now I have one, two, three, four, five, six equal sections. And these lines are also the same exact length as one another, okay? Um, if you are still working your way around, I'm going to stop the video and give you a minute to catch up. And then um, we're going to go from here. All right, guys. So like I said earlier, snowflakes have radial symmetry. So whatever we do to one section of this um, snowflake, we have to do to the other sections. Sort of an easy thing for us to um, get started with is let's think about, let's say I wanted to draw a triangle right here, okay? So I'm gonna walk you through this step and I would suggest that you do this as well. Now, you can draw your triangle 
it can be low, short, or it can be tall. It's totally up to you. Um, and so, and what we're going to do is we're going to pay attention to um, this middle point right here. So this is about the middle of um, this triangle here. So what we're going to do is <clears throat> I'm going to just lightly sketch a triangle here. Okay? So that means now I have to draw that same triangle in this space, this space, this space, this space, and this space. But here's the dilemma. How do I get it to be the exact same size with the same exact angle? <gasps> I don't know. So I'm going to show you guys how. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn our paper and we're going to use our ruler. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up, um, this is really cool. So I'm going to line up the corner of my ruler with the corner here so that the top of the ruler is touching the middle point of the hexagon and then the rest of the ruler is just resting nice and um, evenly against this, this line here. So I have a right angle. I don't know if you guys have started geometry yet, but this is making a right angle here. So if I lightly drew a line up to where my triangle, so then I'm going to put a, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little mark here on my ruler. Okay. And that tells me that is how long my, <clears throat> my line is. Okay. So it's like that. So if I did it here, now I'm going to have to rotate and do it again on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate and I'm going to find, um, I'm going to line up the corner of my ruler with the flats and then the flat side with this line. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a mark right here. And if I wanted to, I could just lightly draw that line up and then you see, oh, check that out. See, there's that line there. And then I can either eyeball, connect this point to this point, or here's a cool thing. I can take the edge of my ruler and I can line up this point and this point with the edge of my ruler. And I can draw my line. So I get a really straight line. All right. So we're going to keep working our way around. Your triangle may like may look different than mine because maybe you only wanted your triangle to come up this high. It's totally up to you. Um, so now, again, I'm rotating, and so this time, um, just so you know, so the um, where the where you just drew your triangle is where you're going to slide in your ruler. So the point of my ruler is going to be lined up with the center here, and again, we're going to line up the flat edge of the ruler with this edge of this line here. Okay. And then, oh, I want to draw a line that comes up that far. Okay. Then again, we can either eyeball it or if you're really precise, you can line up the edges and then draw your line. So now I'm on my third one. So I have three more to go. So again, I'm just going to line up the point here with the middle, line up this along this flat edge, make my mark, draw up to it, rotate around, eyeball, or line up the edges and draw. Then again, and you know what? That line wasn't very good. So I'm going to use my. Oops. Even with the ruler, sometimes we might go off track, and that's totally okay. All right, then again, I'm going to line up. Um, oops, I need to do it right here. I'm going to line up corner along here, make my mark, draw my line. All right. 
then I'm going to connect my points. Connect my points. Now I just have one more to go. So then again, I'm going to line up this corner like this. Put my mark here. Draw up to it. And then I'm going to connect. Oops, I did the same thing again. That's funny. One. And two. Okay. Now here's the cool thing about doing that. Um, now we have um, we have lots of other options that we can think about. Um, we can think about hmm. Now what are we going to do with this line here? What type of shapes am I going to add to it? Um, maybe you just want to connect this point and this point and this point and that point and see what happens. Um, so I can do that for you. I'll show you guys. Boom. Boom. Okay. So there's one. So if I did it there, that means I'm going to rotate and now I need to do it one, two, rotate, three, four, or that's three, where am I, four, One, three, two more, and then I'll show you a couple other things. Um, but once you have the hang of this, you can really do anything um, that you want to. So there I have it. Now, let's say um, you want to jazz it up a little bit more. So let's say, uh, for example, I want to draw a shape within a shape. And I don't really need this line here. I was just using it sort of to figure out the middle here. So let's say I just want to draw a shape within a shape. So I can do that. So if I do that in this triangle, guess what? I gotta do it in this one. So I'm gonna try to draw as neatly and carefully as I can. There. There's two. So that means I have four more to go. One. If you want to use the edge of your piece of poster board, um, please feel free. Or if you don't want to, that's okay too. Whatever makes you most comfortable. Also think about, um, I think I talked to you guys about this when we were drawing your snowman, but feel free to always, it, the cool thing about doing the snowflake is we're rotating the paper all the time. But feel free to rotate the paper into a position that makes it comfortable for you to draw. I think a lot of times our friends think that the paper just has to stay in a certain position and it does not. You can move it all around to make it um, feel comfortable for you to draw. Alright, I got one more. So this is something that, 
doesn't go very quickly if you try to do it nicely. Um, so there I have that. Now maybe I want to do some things in here. The nice thing is now I have this line here. So maybe I want to make another star in here. So what I can do is I can find a point here. So I can say, um, you could say, all right, I'm going to go up roughly halfway here. And if you wanted to be really specific, again, you could take out your little ruler. You could line it up with the middle and the edge here. And you could say, oh, I'm going to go up that high. All right. So then what you could do is you could rotate around all of those. So I'm going to put another line here. So it's the line that's in the middle of these six triangles. So there's a mark there. And then I just have one more. Nope, two more. Wait a minute. Oops, this is curvy. And then I'll put it. All right, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six dots. Okay, so then here's the cool thing is what I can do is if I wanted to draw a star here, I would connect this point to this point, this point to that point, this point to this point, this point to this point, this point to this point, that point. That point, that point, that point. Ta da! So that's pretty cool, right? Um, and you can do all kinds of other things. Like, let's say I want to draw um, a little diamond off the edge of, of this particular um, snowflake. So I have this mark here, and maybe it's fine, um, but maybe I want it to. Maybe I want the line to be a little higher. So I could put a mark here. I'll just make that line a little longer so I know. And then I put a mark there. So then, actually, I just want to put the mark and not the line because here's the cool thing: if I want the line to be straight, if I just line up the edge. So I'll put the mark kind of over here. So if I line up the edge of my ruler with this line here, then the line, I can make sure that line is in the same direction. So then I'm going to rotate to this point. Whoa, it's a little too long. But what I'll do is I'll just, that's going to go off the edge of my paper. And then I'm going to put it right here, put my mark. And then I'm just going to line this up here, draw my line, line this up on the end here, put my mark, draw my line, rotate, put this on the edge, that's going to go straight there, and one more. Put it here, put my mark, and drive up to there. Okay, so now I have those lines. Now, maybe you want to draw like a diamond. So, one way that I like to draw a diamond is if I put a horizontal line kind of in the middle here, then if I draw my diagonal lines, then I have my diamond. Okay? So, again, I'm going to put my Horizontal line, then I'm diagonal, 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 
and I'm rotating, putting my horizontal line, diagonal, 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 rotate, put my horizontal line, diagonal, 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 and then last but not least, I'll put my horizontal line. This is a little bit off the edge of the paper here, but that's okay. And there we go. Oops, wait, I have one more. Put my horizontal line. Diagonal, 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 diagonal. Okay. And if I wanted to add other little elements to the edge of, of this one, I could do that too. Maybe I want to add some other elements to um, this snowflake. Like maybe, let's say I want to do a curve and a curve. So if I do it there, then I'm going to rotate and I'm going to make a curve and a curve. Rotate. Curve, curve, rotate, curve, curve. I'm going to rotate, curve, curve. And last but not least, curve, and curve. All right. Um, I'm going to add some more elements to the snowflake, but what I want you guys to do now is kind of, now that you kind of have the hang of this, you can kind of figure out, um, what you might want to do with your snowflake. Our goal for today is that we're going to draw everything in pencil. And then once we finish that, um, we can go ahead and um, outline it with a thin Sharpie. All right, my third grade friends, and there you have it. Um, this is my completed snowflake. I hope that you have fun with this. And just remember um, sort of the basic uh, things that I showed you about um, creating this so that it's symmetrical. And again, if you don't want to be quite as precise as I am, um, just remember that whatever you do to one particular point or side, just make sure you rotate it around and do it to all, uh, all the points or all the sides. I can't wait to see what you guys have created. Um, save any questions or problems. We can go over them this week during our meet. And uh, I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you on Friday.